Jesse, have you heard about the Rainy Day podcast? I, have. I know I've mentioned it a few times. I've heard it. I want yeah. to make it very clear. That's right. That there's this great podcast on there the LA is. Kings Audio Network. I think, are you guys on the LA Kings Audio Network? Yeah, we are. Yeah. The All the Kings Men is. Mm -hmm. Well, Zach Dooley is the co host of the Rainy Day podcast, and he's coming in right now. Zach, have you had a good couple days of drafting? Have you enjoyed it? Cam, it's felt so good to be covering hockey news again. It's great to be back. Uh, and I've heard that the Rainy Day podcast is the best Ontario Rain based podcast that records in Southern California. That's right. Is that I, true? I've heard that as yeah. well. I've said it. I've said it. So that's where I heard it. Right. Of course, have told mouth. me that. So I was just, I thought that that was pretty cool. Well, I'm going to put this down. They call me the Mary Poppins of AHL broadcasters, Jesse. They do do that. Yeah, it, uh, it's been going on a while. But, Zach, let's talk a little bit about what's going on inside your head, inside the Rain Insider's head, for the Ontario Rain, at least as far as they're concerned. You're going to see a lot of these guys that need a little time. We talked to John Hoven about it a little bit earlier. You know, what do you think are areas that the Rain are really going to help these players succeed in? Obviously, Leski this year. Where do you see some of these guys slotting in for the Ontario Reign? Well, there's going to be a lot of jobs open with the Reign this season. You're going to see a lot of young players who are going to get roles to, to you know, develop at, into NHL players. You know, John Robleski was a great hire because he worked with younger players at the National Team Development Program. He knows how to not only develop players, but he also knows how to win hockey games. He brings an exciting style of hockey to the Reign. Um, from what he's said and from what we've we've heard from people around the industry. And I think that the combination of Robo with the Rain in charge and this young group of players, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. The Rain are going to be very fun to watch this year. Zach, do we expect to see, I mean, the, the Rain are already loaded, as you mentioned, with a ton of young players, but do we expect to see any of the guys taken in this draft? Obviously, Quentin Byfield, not available, but Helge Granz, Kasper Sementavl, um, maybe Brock Faber, I'm not... 100% clear on the US NTDP. Well, no, of course, Alex Turkov could play, so he could play. I mean, how difficult would it be for somebody drafted in this year's class to crack that lineup next season? I mean, are they eligible to play for the Reign? Many of them, the answer is yes. And if you asked me last year, would we expect to see Tobias Bjornfoot in a Reign jersey for the whole year? My answer probably would have been no. And and Toby was an excellent player for the Reign last year. So yes, it, it is possible. Would I expect to see any of these guys on the 2020-21 reign on opening night? My guess would be no. Um, usually you see players two to three years after they're drafted, depending on their development path, come over to the AHL and start there. But it's certainly possible. Like I said, you wouldn't have expected to see that from a guy like Toby Bjornfoot, but here we are. And Toby was maybe one of the biggest success stories from last year's reign team. Well, Zach, first of all, I think you're the only guy who has said U.S. national team development program very fluidly the right way on, on this program, on, on NBC Sports Anywhere. So excellent. Hats off to you. Let's talk about that team a bit, though, because the Ontario Reigns' new head coach, he comes from the – I'm not even going to try it again. So he comes from the U.S. national team. So that's pretty exciting to see a lot of these players that were not directly under his tutelage but under the program – uh, come into the Kings organization over these last couple of years. Like right now, Alex uh, Leferrier is in the USHL, Brock Faber, the national team. Talk to us a little bit about the national team, how it works, how these players rise up with the coaching staff uh, that they begin with as a 17-year-old. Well, it's pretty cool. They separate them by birth year. So there's the under-17 team, the under-18 team. So like you said, Cam, Brock Faber didn't play for Robo on a regular basis. He played for Seth Appert, recently hired by the Rochester American. So another coach who went from that national team development program to the American hockey league. So a really good step in, you know, you know that you're getting good coaches at the NTDP. So Brock Faber, top four guy with team USA, very, very good skating defenseman, right-hand shot, also very good in his own end. So you're, you're getting a guy who you don't have maybe someone like that, you know, right shot, who's a defensive first guy, an elite level skater in the Kings prospect pool. So I was pretty excited to see that pick. Got a couple of texts come in, people who have seen him play with Team USA who said we're getting a very good player in Brock Faber. In the time that we've been talking to you, Zach, the Kings have gone ahead and made another pick. Uh, Martin Kromiak, who I believe is a right winger. Um, he's been playing in the OHL, so obviously not eligible uh, to play, but just another uh, forward added to the to the ranks from Slovakia, so we got five countries. That's right, that's right. We're turning into pretty good. We're going yeah. international. 
That's right. Um, but the Kings acquired a player in a trade who could play in the AHL and, in fact, already has played in the AHL. And Leish Anderson, what do we know about his AHL experience and what he might bring if he does wind up in a rain jersey this season? Leas has worn a lot of jerseys over the last few years. He's played in the NHL with the New York Rangers, 66 games. He's played in the AHL with the Hartford Wolfpack, and he's had some success in the AHL. It's easy to maybe judge a player's failures, but when you look at his successes, when he's been given a consistent run in the AHL, he's been like a .6 point-per-game kind of guy, which when you're looking at you know what a lot of 19-year-old, 18-year-old players do in the AHL, like that's pretty good. It really is. Like You talk about how you know, what he hasn't done, but what he has done is play the 11th most NHL games of any player in his draft class. He's played 66 NHL games by 21. He's been a pretty decent scorer, 0.5, 0.6 point per game in the AHL. And since he's returned to Sweden, he's been nearly a point per game player in the SHL playing against grown men in Sweden, four points from four games this year and almost a point per game last year. So you've got a guy who has proven when he gets a good run of games, he can score in a different variety of leagues, whether he's with the Kings of the Rain, I think will be sorted out um, in training camp this year, but very exciting get. You get a guy who was taken to the top 10 just a couple of years ago for a late second round pick. I mean, that's a great flyer, I think, that the Kings took uh, with that trade. Zach, we're talking about the U.S. National Development Program, American players. I want to ask you, last year, 11 first round picks Americans. This year, only two. Is that just parody? Why are we seeing less American prospects this year. Maybe it's John Robleski. Maybe it's John Robleski. He just produces first round talent, Seth Appert, more of a second round talent kind of coach. I don't know. Maybe that's the case, but it just seems like you just never know. Right. In the draft you're, you're seeing, I mean, you see Germany get what two players taken in the first round plus a player in the early second. So I think it's, it's cool that, you know, there's so many more places where elite level talent is being produced. It's great to see the U S players, getting picked. I mean, that that's, we're all, we're Americans here on, on this trio of um, people on this show. So we like to see the U S players do well, but who knows, you know, uh, that's it. you stumped me. I wasn't prepared for that one. Well, that's what I do. And, and you can always get more of that on the podcast. Well, Zach, one more before we let you go, you got married this summer. Congratulations to you and Mrs. Rain insider. But now here you're on day two of the LA Kings coverage of the 2020 NHL draft brought to you by Geico, which day would you say has been the better day in 2020? Between the day one and day two of the draft? No, between your wedding and being here today with us. Well, as the lowest billed guest on this show, there had to have been a pretty impressive collection of guests that were put on before me uh, to be ranked sixth on the draft card. I'm surprised they didn't have to go to a second card, you know, to fit me in there. Um, so with that in mind, I'm still going to have to say my wedding day, uh, was slightly better. Um, but obviously, you know, a great day today as well. Uh, you with that umbrella was an iconic image, I think from this draft. Yeah. Zach, you're looking at it all wrong though. We were building up to you. We teased you till the end. The closer. Yeah. Mariano Rivera over there. Zach, thanks for joining us and congrats again on the wedding, uh, to you and Mrs. Dooley from earlier this year. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cam. And just so everyone knows, uh, I do owe you $1, Cam, from our bet on the recent Rainy Day podcast, an all-name team player drafted by the Kings, so that, that uh, those 100 pennies will be coming your way soon. For you. Zach, thank you. Let's-